For this first week of season 17 of The Agenda, something special for our week in review. An excerpt from Nam Kiwanuka's conversation with Steve Pakin to talk about his intimate new memoir on former Prime Minister John Turner. Going back to that headline about him just being in uh, prime minister for X amount of yeah. uh, days didn't really, it kind of underscored the importance of Mr. Turner. As justice minister under Pierre Trudeau, he took on criminal code reform that saw abortion and homosexuality decriminalized. Uh, he was also a staunch Catholic. How did he reconcile the two? Uh, wonderful question. And, and he just seemed to have an understanding that while as a Catholic, uh, he could never abide abortion, as a Catholic, um, homosexuality would have been difficult for him. But as a minister of the crown, with responsibilities to the population as a whole, he somehow found a way not to allow his personal beliefs uh, affect what he was required to do on the job. And it's interesting, Prime Minister Trudeau, the current Prime Minister's father, was justice minister uh, before him in the Pearson government. And he couldn't get those reforms through. Now, in fairness, it was a minority parliament at the time, but Pierre Trudeau, as Justice Minister, couldn't get those reforms through. John Turner takes over as Pierre Trudeau's Justice Minister, and he was able to do so. Admittedly, a majority government, but he also knew Parliament and loved Parliament. What do you mean by that? He had relationships on all sides of the House. He, he, he frequently, when he wanted to get a bill passed, would bring his opposition critics into a meeting with him, and he'd say, look, here's what I want to do. You tell me what you need so you can get this through your caucus, so I can get your support. I'm prepared to make these changes. It was a more collaborative style of government. And as a result, I think he got stuff through, like the reforms you just talked about, that, uh, that others could not and did not do. This book covers a period of time where things are very different from how they are now. Yes. Um, and you write about Tommy Douglas and how he was once uh, named by the greatest Canadian by the CBC. And you mentioned that um, people didn't know his stance on that issue, that particular issue. How did you approach writing um, a book for today's audience with stuff that happened back in history that people might be like, well, that's wrong? The quote you're referring to came out of the 1968 federal election leaders debate in which the reforms that Mr. Turner put forward on decriminalizing homosexuality and abortion were a subject, obviously, of the debate. It was the most controversial issue in the country at the time. And Tommy Douglas said, we can't take a criminal approach to these issues. We need to take a mental health approach. It's not behavior that ought to be criminalized. It's behavior that ought to be treated as a mental illness, homosexuality. Now, that's more than 50 years ago. Those views obviously do not stand up to the test of time, but that's what, that's what progressive people believed more than 50 years ago. And there are numerous examples throughout the book of, you know, we're going through this all the time now, right? Mm -hmm. Where things that were said uh, 50 years ago just don't, they don't really meet the test of time anymore, even among saints like Tommy Douglas. Mm. Well, we mentioned that Turner spent 79 days as prime minister. Mm -hmm. What would you say was his downfall? Uh, a whole bunch of things. Number one, he'd been in the private sector for 10 years when he decided to come out of political retirement and go back into public life to replace Pierre Trudeau. And the Liberals had been in power for too long at that point. And, uh, you know, there was a, I remember it well, it's 38 years ago, but there was a feeling in the land that the Liberals had been in for too long and they needed replacing. So number one, he's coming in at the end of a long Liberal reign and, you know, people are ready for a change. Number two, he had the misfortune to go up against one of the truly gifted politicians in Canadian history in Brian Mulroney. Mm -hmm. The guy was good. I mean, you say what you want about his policies, the guy was good. Back-to-back -back majority governments, first guy since Sir John A. Macdonald for the Conservatives to do that. Mr. Turner was very rusty. It, you, we have to be honest about that. When he came back out of retirement, um, it wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. He didn't know the issues very well. His French was rusty. Uh, his, his political antennae were not as sharp as they once were when he was sort of the boy wonder justice minister and the youngest finance minister uh, in 100 years before that. So... Did he lack confidence at that point? He lacked... That was another thing as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there was that moment, I guess, uh, after he became prime minister where... Her, or I guess on, on, on the verge of his becoming prime minister when he sort of shared with his sister this notion that, Brenda, can I really do this? Am I really good enough to do this? And I remember her telling me, how can you say this? I mean, if, you're not, if you don't think you can do this, why are you doing this? Mm. She almost tried to buck him up at the time. Anyway, yeah, so the, 
a whole bunch of things. That's a theme throughout his life, right? That's a theme throughout his life. Am I actually, he's the boy wonder in so many circumstances, but does he actually have the self-confidence to pull this off? Again, when he walked into the room, everyone's like, wow, you know, people wanted to be around him. Yeah. I, why was he so insecure? Was, did his, how he look work against him? You know, there is a tendency uh, to assume that people who are gorgeous have no brains, right? That is a, that is a, a kind of a reverse di discrimination. And he suffered from that. You gotta remember, this was a guy who was not only gorgeous, but as you pointed out, fastest man in the country at the time, Olympic level athlete. He had a bit of a jock personality. Funny thing is, he was a Rhodes Scholar. Pierre Trudeau was not. And yet people constantly looked at Pierre Trudeau and, as the brilliant intellectual, mm -hmm. and John Turner as this sort of jockish guy who, you know, whose intellect was overrated. And in fact, you know, they were different kinds of guys, but John Turner was no slouch. I mean, the guy was, he was every bit, an in, he was every bit as intellectual in his own way as Pierre Trudeau was. I, th I think that's fair to say. That's just some of what we've covered this week. You can find more, including the full conversation, on our website, tbo.org, our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the agenda, or our Twitter feed, twitter.com slash the agenda. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.